Thousands of patients are diagnosed each year with cervical cancer. Despite the HPV vaccines and screenings, advanced cervical cancer cases are actually on the rise. This morning, we welcome Dr. Christopher DiStefano, a gynecologist surgeon from Mayo Clinic, to talk with us about what women need to know. So first off, good morning and welcome to the show. Uh, but let's start with something simple. Can you explain what exactly uh, cervical cancer is? morning. The cervix is a small opening at the bottom of the uterus. Cervical cancer develops in this region due mostly to the human papilloma virus, which 85% of adult women have had at some point in their lives. And I'm going to assume that most likely any individual who has a cervix uh, could be at risk for this cancer. Is there any reason why we may be seeing an increase right now? Yeah, it's still, it, most uh, diagnoses do happen at an early stage, but 16% are being diagnosed at a later stage. And this is multiple factors, but most importantly, decreased pap smears, increased obesity, and inconsistent uptake of the HPV vaccine. So how often should a uh, you know, woman get a pap smear in order to really detect for this? Yeah, so those guidelines have changed significantly over the last decade. And that's one of the issues we're seeing is that women used to get a pap smear or pap test every year. Now we recommend every three to five years, but it's most important to just get the pap test and then talk to your doctor about uh, when the next one should be based on that result. Okay, so based on your result, then you could determine how soon you need to get the next one. Because I'm sure a lot of people are curious, if you wait three to five years, doesn't that kind of give a chance for something to, to possibly spread in your body? It, it, uh, the HPV takes about 10 years to develop a cervical cancer. And most women have had HPV, which is the human papilloma virus, at some point in their lives. But most bodies can clear it. So it does take up to 10 years to develop cervical cancer. So that's why the guidelines change to three to five years. But yes, it's just important to have that usual source of health care, some kind of annual visit with a primary care provider or a woman's health specialist like a gynecologist. And why do you think uh, people are being diagnosed um, so often in the late stages in, in opposed to the early stages? Uh, th it's still uh, under debate. It's about a 1% increase in distance stages, but really it should be going down because we have such successful screening tests like the PAP test and, sc and vaccines, actually. And the vaccine is really a remarkable in invention for uh, prevention of screening or prevention of cancer. And so we do recommend the uh, vaccine as well to prevent cancer. Uh, but the main reason we think is after a woman gives birth or is through the obstetric years, um, a lot of women fall uh, through the cracks in some ways and, and don't get those uh, cancer screening tests in their 30s and 40s. So a lot of the increase is happening in women's 50s. So we recommend that you know women, after they uh, give birth, if, if pregnancy uh, was part of their plans, that then they go and seek uh, cancer screening tests in, in their 40s. And we know uh, when the vaccine originally came out, came out, it was recommended for young uh, girls. Can women, older women, still be eligible to receive that vaccine? Yes, the eligibility criteria have it, has expanded. Sometimes insurance companies aren't covering that yet, but that's a discussion uh, with the women's health provider, with the patient. Uh, but 26 to 45 women can catch up on the vaccine uh, to prevent the future development of cervical cancer. But we typically recommend it at 11 to 12 years and as early as nine years of age. And what are some of the treatments for people who are suffering from cervical cancer? That's a great question. And um, it, it really depends on when it's caught. If it's caught in very early stages, a local disease, which most cervical cancers are caught early, uh, especially if women are up to date on pap smears, then, the, then it's just going to be surgery and that can be a cure. Um, however, once it becomes more distant or spreads, then we start adding in radiation uh, therapy. And then if it's a distant stage, which 16% are, uh, then, then we have to add in chemotherapy uh, and we can't do surgery any longer. All right, really helpful information. Thank you so much, Dr. Stefano with the Mayo Clinic. We really appreciate having you on this morning. Absolutely. Have a great day.